Okay, welcome to Monday, week two. So last week you should have done the uh, module one, which is the chapter out of the Riddles of Existence book on time. The PDF is also there. And then there was just a short three, 13 minute YouTube video reviewing the three theories of time. You'll also notice that the time slides from that day are now up as a PDF. I'll get the slides up within 72 hours of giving them because I modified them before. And then sometimes I go back and go, oh wow, that slide sucked and then I, fix it up before I, so that way next time it's it's ready to go. Um, then on Wednesday we did, there's these two short papers. One is this nice sample paper for an example of a good philosophy paper, which is uh, by a former student about time travel. It was just two pages. And then this Thomas Nagel piece on the meaning of life, which I think connects to what I was talking about in the, in the slides about this worry that life is meaningless because uh, will go out of existence at some time. And I think that's really connected to this presentist view of time where you do go out of existence when time moves forward. But if you take one of the other approaches to time, the past still exists, the shitty things and the great things you did in the past are still there. So maybe that worry doesn't make so much sense if we don't hold the theory, if we don't hold presentism. Okay, so this week we're gonna talk about personal identity. Again, kind of in, inconsistent or consistent with our theme of doing a chapter from the metaphysics book on Monday and then something shorter on Wednesday. We'll do this 16 page reading on personal identity in the Riddles of Existence book, the PDF is up. Also there's these PBS crash course philosophy videos. I'll put them as optional in further weeks when there's a video that's relevant to our topics. But I wanted you to watch this one just to familiarize yourself with PBS's crash course philosophy. There's a lot of cool topics. Maybe you'll be interested in what's there. And then next class, uh, just two really short things. One is by Christine Korsgaard on animal minds and then a short little two page thing about a cat that I wrote. So uh, just talking about animal, what, what animal minds are like. So that's Monday and Wednesday. Next week we'll get to free will and consciousness. Okay, questions about, and this will be the first week. If you're in group A, you'll be submitting, if you go to assignments, there should be second week group A section paragraph submission. It's by noon on Thursday, so the day before sections, and there should be a spot for you to do a text submission, just one paragraph. Something you're confused about, something you wanna challenge. In fact, it doesn't even have to be from this week if you wanna talk about time stuff, but preferably it's stuff about identity or about animal, animal consciousness. Preferably about identity, actually. But, uh, and then if you, if you go to announcements, you can see the groups are now posted here. Nope. Here, I took screenshots, and so if you're wondering which group you're in, it's an announcement. There's also this announcement that I sent, I wanna say late last night, but it was just 5.42. I'm still on Istanbul time, so that was probably like three in the morning for me. But uh, uh, if you have pets, bring them to class. I'd love to have a dog or two running around the, in the lecture hall. Seems like it'd be more fun. Uh, great, questions, concerns, anything? Shoot. No you should come on, I mean, the, 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 the groups are not, so you should just come to sections, right? Sections are for everybody always, but the, the people who are responsible for coming prepared with, I have something to talk about, right? So that I, I, I've given it some prior thought, I thought about something that I wanna say or something I wanna argue or something I'm confused about, I've given it enough thought that I can ask a sensible question and get us going, right? So I'm just dividing up the responsibility to get sections going. Uh, between the three groups, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so let's talk about personal identity, or identity first and then personal identity. Let's see here, view, slideshow. Um, so if you're familiar, is anybody, the, the ship of Theseus, it's a very famous example. It comes from uh, a historian named Herodotus. Um, and you see it in pop culture, if you watched, uh, uh, God, what, what was the Wanda, WandaVision? They have a ship of Theseus climax battle. At the, anyway, um, well, let's, all right, let's talk about identity. So when philosophers talk about identity, there's two sorts of senses of the term identity, and one we don't wanna talk about, and one we do wanna talk about. So I'm gonna introduce this distinction simply so we can take the thing we don't care about and set it off to one side. So what we don't care about is qualitative identity. Qualitative identity is the degree in which two supposedly different things have the same qualities in common, two things with exactly the same qualities would be qualitatively identical. Um, so, I don't know, two pencils that roll off the factory line, the factory line, they have the same color, the same materials, 
They actually do have slightly different properties. What properties do they not share? Location, right? They're, they're, I mean, if you have all the same properties together, we often say that that means you are the same thing, right? Like sure, uh, but, uh, but, but when, when, when people talk about qualitative, how similar are two things? Uh, what we're interested in is numerical identity. So if you were to count the number of things that exist right now, or maybe that have always existed, uh, two supposedly different things are numerically identical if you only need to count them once, right? So take uh, Sherlock Holmes, say, take Superman and Clark Kent. Uh, presumably I only count that as one person, right? Even though, because Clark Kent and Superman are the same person, not everybody knows them at the same, as the same person, but they turn out they are, so he only counts once. Uh, presumably everybody in this room counts, like there's, a, there's like 70 people, 100 people in this room. Does young me count and old me count as two different people? Or are they just one, right? Um, so if you were to just think of, think of numerical identity as, is do I count this thing, to, are there two things or are there one things if I were trying to count things of this sort? That's what we're interested in. So here's this famous example that's kind of a starting point for talking about identity. So suppose you have a ship made of 100 parts. This is the ship of Theseus. Theseus was some, does anybody know their Greek history? He's like a, a famous sailor and he did some sea battles and they stuck his ship uh, and made it a museum at the docks and then over time like the weather would be, you know, storms would come in and maybe break the, the deck and they'd go repair it a little bit. And, then, and Herodotus was asking the question, he's like, is this the same ship as, like we kept replacing parts in the museum because it kept getting broken and like decaying and eventually it's made of different parts. Is it still the same ship that we're displaying? That's where the, the source of the question comes from. But let me just describe it in this way. Suppose you have a ship made of 100 parts. At the end of every year, one part is replaced by a perfect duplicate, the same type of wood from the same factory coming off the same assembly line. Maybe even it was manufactured on the same date and they just put it in a warehouse for replacement parts, right? Um, at the end of every year, one part is replaced by a perfect duplicate. At the end of the 100 years, the ship will be made of wholly new parts. Uh, nevertheless, is the ship the same ship on year 101 with all new parts as it was on ship zero? And if it isn't, so somebody might want to say, yeah, sure, it is a new ship. Okay, great. When did it become a new ship, right, if you think so? And if it isn't the same ship at year 101, on what intervening year did it become a new ship? All right, let me just stop and ask that question. Does anybody have a strong inclination as to how to answer this? Is there just one ship the entire time from year zero to year 101? Are there two ships? Are there 101 ships? If there are two ships, when did the second ship come, when did they swap? Yeah, what do you got? We got, there's two hands in the middle, there's three hands, all right. Guy in the cool green sweater. Um, I think it's, I think it's the same ship. The whole time. Because in the, the crash course, it was like the function of it, like the knife thing is what I'm comparing to this. So I think it's the same ship because it's gradually being replaced. And so like the sailors, for their minds, like they're sailing on the same ship. It's like a soccer team and you replace players on a team, but it's still like, like it, you replace one player a, a year, it's still the, the Beshitosh Eagles, the Dallas Cowboys, the whatever, right? Okay, do you think, I, I always, I find this like function argument interesting because I wonder, does it make a difference if the ship is sailing and they're replacing one part and it's still functioning versus if I'm replacing the parts at a museum? Like does it have to be, I, I actually don't have an answer here, but I kind of, I, when you connect it to function, I'm wondering if I'm replacing parts but it's no longer functioning, uh, I wonder if it's, is, it, is the act of functioning in, the, in its role important to maintaining its identity? I don't know. Uh, did you have your hand up too? I would say it's a different ship. Okay, so how many, actually how many ships? Are there two or 101? I'd say there's 101. 101, so any change, brand new ship. Yeah. Okay, and, the, and then now yeah, we have this legal fiction that it's the same ship, like we, we, we treat it like the same ship. We ca for legal purposes, we count it as one, right? Just because it makes ownership easier, it makes the laws easier, and, and it makes the, but if we're talking physically, physics, metaphysics, the, the nature of reality, objectively, this is 101 ships. That's your, that's your claim. Yeah. Like there's a pragmatic usefulness to treating it like one, but that's, don't mistake that for reality. Good. Uh, what if 
if there's just two ships, because there's one, and then once you replace all of the parts on day 101's second ship. So you think it's the same ship up until the last original part gets replaced? Yeah. Okay, so then you would say, same ship up until year 99, I think, and then on year 100, now we've got not the ship of Theseus, but the ship of, yeah. the, the clone of the ship of Theseus, or something like that. It's a little odd to think that the ship is still the ship of Theseus because there's just one piece over there. I mean, okay, maybe it's not the same ship, but, but there's definitely a new ship once you replace all the parts. There's some point, you want to say there's some point when it becomes a new ship. And I think that point is when all their parts are replaced. I mean, there's a couple of places we could draw that line. That's one place we could draw the line. Yeah. I think it's the same ship throughout the entirety of the process. Okay. Well, and why is that? Do you have any, I mean, that, do, you have a, do you have a case to be made against the person who thinks that it's a new ship every single time a single piece gets replaced? Not at all. Okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah, there are some philosophers who make this sort of move that, that there are two ships and there, oh, you, no, oh, you mean consecutively, not, not, no, not concurrently. So when, when, does, when does the second ship come into existence? Or I mean concurrently. Concurrently, so they're overlapping and then they separate, right? So it's a space-time worm that shares a, a common ancestor. Wait, what is, what is, actually, what are you saying? Here's the original ship, and when you add the first new part, that's like beginning the construction of the second ship. Does the second ship exist? At, so at year, at year two, I've replaced a part. The old ship is gone? No, it's still there. It's still there, but there's also a new ship. Yeah. Okay. So I, it's not that there's 101 ships one after another. It's by, the 100, by year 101, there's 101 ships overlapping. No. In the second year, the second ship, the construction of the second ship, like, right? And then year three, construction of the third ship begins? No, it's the continuing on. Ah, so it's the first ship, it's the first ship up until year 99 being built into the second ship, and the second ship takes over at year 100 or something along those lines? So you're, gonna, you're, still, having a you're still having a threshold. At some point, the A ship turns into B ship, right? Year 99 to that, that crossover. Did you have an argument for? Yeah, I made a refutation. So every time that we as human beings eat food, our body is processing and yeah. getting rid of and repairing things in our body. Does that mean that we are new people every time we eat? No. So I would argue the same is true for the ship. It's, we're going to get to people in a minute, right? But I think it's harder to take this line of being a totally new thing with people, right? Just when we, because it seems like, it seems like I can't say uh, I'm not responsible for what happened yesterday. Don't hold me to promises. Don't you know, like just because I've lost some cells and like they've been regenerated by my eating. Um, yeah. Going off like what you just said, I think like the ship has. I think I'm going to say that there's just one ship. Like the ship, what makes it like the ship of Theseus is like its identity. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is identity though? Is that? It's like it's like a abstract like idea it's like what do you talk about like with people like you have like your own like just because you, you don't like you're like replacing yourself like every day doesn't change like who you are and the ship is like it's like an abstract idea of like um you're kind of being like like a personal like identity yeah so there is something that's it's identity but we don't want to say we don't want to say it's magic right so, uh, no, I'm not saying it's magic. I'm just like, like it's hard to like yeah, let me, to it, well, so let's say, I mean, one thing I think would be a bad answer is if we say, well, as long as the one part that doesn't get replaced is its uh, theseusness, right? This, the its, its identity, like it's, 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 as long as it's still, Theseus, and like, well, what, what is it making it, what's making it Theseus, right? Like, is it that it has the same parts? How many parts can it lose and still be Theseus? So I, like, what, so I think you're right is, what is, what, what needs to stay the same? What is crucial to identity, right? Is it the function? Is it the, sh is it the abstract shape? I go with like function, honestly, yeah. because like, the people, I guess, like, who use 
to just for like his purposes. They they have like attributed like something to like this boat or the ship and um is that maybe maybe it, yeah, the crucial thing seems like it'll be different depending on the type of thing, right? So a pawn, like pieces of a game of chess, to be a pawn is its role in the game, right? I can replace the pawn with a penny. When we treat the penny that way, it's the pawn now, right? So it's the role that matters, not what it's made. A diamond seems like it depends on what it's made out of, right? If I, like, it, it's not its role, it's like the material. So like, the identity of different things might depend on different features, yeah. The one thing I want to say, I just want to push back, because some philosophers, some people sometimes say this, they want to say, well, I, it's identity, it's soul. And I'm like, well, what is that, right? Maybe it's different for pawns and for ships and for people. Yeah, you have your, you've had your, you've been like chomping at the bit, so I'm sorry. But um, what I was going to say was, um, it's like, it's like the person has their hips replaced or, yeah. um, their legs cut off and get you know new legs. Like, it doesn't it doesn't change who they are as a person. Like they just have new parts, but like they're still the same person. You know, like with the same like, identity. Like, it seems it seems like one thing we could say there is that I've only replaced some parts, and you can still be the ship of Theseus even yeah. if you're. The other thing we might say there is that people aren't physical objects, so I can have my physical parts swapped out. That doesn't matter. We're maybe we'll talk about that in a second. We're I don't want to say we're a ghost. I want to say we're a set of psychology or we're we're personality traits. We're a, we're a mental being, not a not a. So I, I'm not sure. There's two ways you could be resistant to saying the physical change doesn't change me. One is that it's only gradual or small, which applies for the ship. Or maybe that that doesn't matter as much for people as it matters for ships. Well, like the, it could have the same memories, or like people who own yeah. have the same memories. Like it's still what it is. It's the ship of that, but there's a lot of philosophers who thought memories was the crucial thing for people, yeah. as long as there's overlapping memories. Yeah. I've got two hands over here. I'm not sure. Uh, what, ma my masked vigilante here. Um, so I was just going to argue that um, I feel like just the act of changing a board is kind of an arbitrary way of deciding when it becomes a new ship, because there's all sorts of changes that could happen to the boat that are not replacing a plank that you know, it gets painted, a rock hits it, and it shits or, off a piece or of... Or you, like, fall and, like, a board breaks or something. Yeah. Like, does, it, does, does a new ship happen every single time? Just any kind of change at all happens to it? Because if so, I feel like there's not really any way to quantify that there's so many different minute things that could affect the composition of, of the boat. Yeah. All right, let me go. I'm going to keep going just real quick. Um, so here's my... Uh, chart of, so at year zero, it's 100% original parts, it's 100% OG. Uh, year 99, I've replaced one part, now it's 99% OG. Then there's this kind of, so you might think that the crucial change happens right as soon as you replace one part. And in fact, that would be like you, every single part you replace would then make it a new ship. You might think the threshold at like this 50% line. Or you might think the thresholds here at the bottom, right, right when you replace the last part. Or you might think there's no threshold, and it stays the same ship the entire time, even if you go all the way through. So here's my four possibilities. So here's one is, it's the same, we've got one ship in the history of the universe. How many ships, I wanna say, how many ships existed have gone through this harbor? One, 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 and then when, there's 100, when the last original part gets replaced, that's a new ship. So now I say, oh, there was two ships that went through this harbor. There was the first ship and then the second ship. Another possibility is it becomes a, sec this, a new ship uh, at year 50. Uh, another possibility is that it's a new ship at every time I replace a single part. And lastly, a uh, possibility that it's the same ship the entire time. Um, there's a problem. I'm not sure if it's a fatal problem with the first two. So the one that says it becomes a new ship when the last plank gets replaced and the one that says it becomes a new ship when it crosses the 50% line. I'm gonna give, give you an argument that I think is very serious, again, like very seriously kills the first two, which leaves us with the second two. But maybe I'm wrong, right? So this is kind of a hard argument to understand, but suppose I've got 100% original parts, here's that 50% threshold, here's where it's got totally new parts. So I say, let's just say the threshold I'm trying to draw is right here. So there was the ship here at year zero. 
let's call that A. It's ship A all the way until it's 50%. The, the last, the, at year 50, it's still A. But then it crosses over to being 51% uh, new parts and only 49% original parts. So now it's a new ship. Now it's ship B, right? Because there is there is only a 49% similarity between the ship at year 51 and the ship at year zero. Okay, great. Problem, what's the, how similar is the ship at year uh, 51 to the ship at year 50, right? It's 99% the ship at year 50. So these should actually be the same ship, right? If we think about it that way. This is 99% what it was a year before. So really, these two ships should be the same at year 49 and 50. But of course, if we look at it this way, they shouldn't be the same. So it seems like I've got, if I start trying to draw a threshold, I end up, depending on which years I'm looking at, the similarity will shift around, and I'll end up with arguments that they're the same ship and they're different ships. So I think that, that drawing any sort of threshold view, whether you put the threshold at year 99 and 100, or you put the threshold at the 50% line, is going to have this problem with this problem. Maybe there's a way around it. Either way, those aren't the ones we're going to be interested in, because what we want to do is talk about people. And, peop and philosophers don't tend to find this, those positions very attractive when we talk about people. Um, so let's talk about, so one possibility is every single time anything changes, you're a new person. Um, that's also not all that popular for people, although I think that there's something interesting about this one. Uh, Derek Parfit has some argument. I actually do a lot of work kind of on this. Um, but let's talk about the more, the, the more basic views, the ones that are more widespread, the ones that philosophers debate the most, which are versions of this last one. And the last one says the ship stays the same, the ship of Theseus stays the same, as long as there is a spatio-temporal continuity, right? If I disassemble the entire ship and rebuild it from new parts in dock all within an hour, I've just made a new ship, right? The claim is. But if I replace the parts little by little, slowly over time, the claim is that that keeps the ship the same. As long as the change is small over time, there's a continuity between that ship at year zero and the ship at 100. The, the ship at 101 is made of completely new parts, but there's a slow changing progress from that original ship. So as long as this change is slow and there's continuity between the parts, and it's, you know, it's not like I, dis so the, there's a continuity, I, I don't know what to say here other than the spatiotemporal continuity, but the claim is you have to change, you have to have the parts replaced and have the parts have to be replaced slowly. And you have to be continuous as a physical object with the past object. Okay, so let's, let's apply this to people. Uh, so the, that's the issue, of, when we talk about the ship of Theseus, we're talking about the issues of what we call identity. What makes a thing the same thing over time? Usually we say identity when we're talking about uh, physical objects, like the ship of Theseus, like a pawn in the game of chess, like an electron. Uh, what, 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 what makes gravi gravity here the same somewhere else, right? What makes these the same thing? But we also have this other debate, which I guess is a subsegment of debates about identity, is what we call personal identity which is when you take the same questions about identity that we were using to talk about the ship of Theseus and you apply it to people, right? What makes you the same person over time? So how, how can you possibly be the same person as some infant? That infant is made out of different physical material, just like the ship of Theseus. Also had a really different personality. I also don't share any memories with that infant. I'm pretty sure everything from my first week of life is gone. Uh, I think, I'm not sure when memories start to, start to persist. Um, there's also questions about, can I hold elderly Nazis responsible for what they did in their youth? Are they different people now? Is it worth going to Argentina and hunting down 90-year-old uh, concentration camp Nazi guards who murdered Jews during the Holocaust? They still do that. It happens like every two years they catch another one hiding in Argentina. There are always some elderly farmer who's trying to keep a low profile, right? Are they the same person, right? They're probably very different now than they were back then. Is it still possible for me to punish the person I want to punish? 
by punishing this 90 year old or is that person gone right I always wonder if I could resurrect if I could build a if I could reassemble Hitler right before he died and then kill him I'm like ah I got my revenge or would I just be killing a clone right somebody have their hand up over here yeah, but I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. Um, and then I like this one, which is why are you saving money for your future? That person will be so different from you. Why treat him as yourself? And so, I mean, I assume that, you know, I think we should give money to strangers and help strangers, but we obviously also help our future self quite a bit. You're trying to learn things so your future self can have a career. You're trying to go on dating apps so you can find your future self a... You're putting money in your savings so you can, reti you can retire. That guy might be totally different from you. He's definitely gonna be made of different material, right? Your cells are constantly dying and being replaced. So it's not the physical continuity. Also, I bet you you're as different when you're 80 as you were between you and when you were eight, right? You know, there's like a couple similarities, but man, I was a very different eight-year-old. And so I'm assuming uh, that I don't know if I'll make it to 80, but assuming I did, I think that guy's going to be very different than I am now. Shoot. Uh, you can also do this to the ship and the people. You can ask them every day, do you think yourself as the same one as yesterday? Yeah, so well, what happens if there's a drastic, so it, it does seem like the, the gradual change right. helps, right? If someone gets hit over the head or has like a metal spike driven through their head, right, changes their personality wipes their memories, right? They're still physically the same person. Are they the same, but are they the same person? Like, Did that person die and get replaced? So now there's somebody, there used to be somebody who was calm, level-headed, loved their family, liked work, loved jello, favorite color was green, gets the spike through their head. Now they've got, they're quick to anger, they're kind of dumb, they hate their job, they're lazy, they sleep a lot, they really love, they hate jello, they love meat. You know, like, just like say a total personality shift. Right, you can simply just ask them if you still feel the same. Are they the same person? I don't care what the fuck they say. Like, you, like, like they're idiots. I mean, like, why would I expect them to have, I mean, let me go ask people on, on the street, like, you know, like, it, like, the question is, this is for us to settle, right? Like, why would, why would they know? Do they have magical insight as to whether they're the same person as they were yesterday? No. How do you know that? I mean, like, they'll say, I remember, but, what does that have to do with anything? Does me is memory the thing that matters? Yes, yeah. So you could make the claim that memory matters. I mean, if someone doesn't think that memory matters, they'll say, I'm not the same person because I, I, memory isn't the, uh, either way. So somebody have their, yeah. Um, I think what makes you the per same person, it's not that you have the same cells, obviously, because you replace your cells, but I think it's because the cells are made from you. Like, you're, original, you're originally one cell, and then your cells all come from that same cell. They're daughter or sister cell, I forgot what it's called, but they're like all made from the same cell anyways. And even if you you break down molecules and you yeah. add things to your body and stuff, that like if it adds to your actual cells, like if your cells doing it, then that's still you. I like, I like, I like this, I like this. This is sort of in, not a lot of philosophers push this line, it's kind of, but this is the sort of line that I push. There's something about like how you're manufacturing yourself, yeah. so it's like right? You actually add like a metal part to your body that isn't physically you. I mean, you can be like, you know, part well, of- If you added it, I kind okay. of think. Okay, like, <laughs> Um, well, it's your cells added in, yeah, but... Well, I made a decision. I'm a self-preserving thing, and oh, part of my self-preserving is I went out and got a surgery to replace... So I think, I think the way... I think it's... Yeah, you, if you're manufacturing yourself, but maybe not in a cell way, but in, like, a directed way, like, you're somehow in control. Like, like, puts a rod through you or something. That's not really you. That's yeah. just something that's in you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, that, that's not going to be in the... That's, like, kind of a... It's, that's, a that's not a very... That's an obscure view, but it's one that I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of. Okay. Uh, Okay, let's talk about, um, <laughs> so this is this example from the beginning of the book, or the chapter, right? You're on trial for murder, you decide to represent yourself, you say, I'm not the murderer, you say, the murderer was a different person from you. The judge asks for your evidence, do you have photographs of a mustachioed intruder? Don't your fingerprints match those on the murder weapon? Can you show that the murderer is left-handed? No, you say, your defense is very different. Here's your closing argument. I can see that the murderer is rightly like me, has the same fingerprints as I do, is clean shaven like me, he even looks exactly like me in the surveillance camera photographs introduced by the defense. No, I have no twin. In fact, I admit I remember committing the murder. But the murderer is not the same person as me, for I have changed. That person's favorite rock band was Led Zeppelin. I now prefer R Todd Rundgren. I don't know who that is. Uh, that person had an appendix. I do not. Mine was removed last week. 
That person was 25 years old, I am now 30. I am not the same person as the murderer of five years ago, therefore you cannot punish me for no one is guilty of a crime committed by someone else. I kind of think maybe the 80 year old Nazi can say this. I don't think the five, the guy can say it, I mean, maybe not, I'm not sure. The five year difference I don't think can. Where's my guy who thinks that the ship change, you, the ship changes after every part gets replaced, right? So this person has had his, at least some physical parts replaced, some of his personality has changed, He's a different person. I would say he is technically like a different person, mm -hmm. but that, that obviously like in a court setting, that wouldn't. You can lean heavy on this sort of like, well, pragmatically for, for all given purposes, I don't know, but for moral purposes, I feel like I'm starting to worry that like, man, we sure are treating them a lot like a single object. And then like occasionally just having an asterisk saying, but they're really not. I'm like, maybe they are just one object. Uh, and it's not just a pragmatic fiction. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, I can see that, but also at the same time, everyone should be responsible for their actions. And, like, if that's the case, then... Is this I, his actions? He murdered someone. I mean, he's different now. Yeah, but I could be like, oh, yeah, I just stole something yesterday, but today I'm a different person, so I shouldn't be responsible for something that I did yesterday. Does it, how about this? The 20-year-old the, the Nazi concentration camp guard and the 80-year-old guy who's lived in Argentina, and now he's a farmer and he's raising kids, and... Does that, does that seem, like, I'm presuming that the 80-year-old is completely different from his 20-year-old self. I get that, but he also still, like, he should be responsible for what he did to other people, because if I was the one who got killed, I would want to come back and kill him again. Yeah. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, just something I found interesting. Around line six, he says, I admit that I remember committing I know, I know, I know. I like... Someone else committed. It's funny, memory has this sort of inbuilt, you have to be the same person to remember. So it's kind of, it's actually people who try to make personal identity depend on memories. Sometimes people point out to say it's a memory it already implies that you're the same person. And so you can't use memories to establish pers personal identity. Anyway, um, so one thing you could try saying is, well, the consciousness stays the same, the soul stays the same. I'm not gonna say, I, the, the soul, the way I, I think of the soul here is, is related to three philosophical problems, free will, consciousness, and personal identity. We're talking about personal identity today. We're doing free will and consciousness next time. Um, what I think when people talk about the soul, what they're talking about is whatever the hell makes us the same person from time to time, personal identity, whatever the hell consciousness is, and whatever it is that seems to be underlying our sense of free will. Those might be three different things, right? Um, I think they're just sort of mysterious things. We should try to understand them. We should try to understand what personal identity is. Is it our physical continuity? Is it our psychological continuity? I don't think it's a ghost, right? But when people say, that I want to know what the, the soul makes us the same, I take them to be just saying, our identity makes us the same. I'm, I'm like, okay, cool. What is our identity? <laughs> what makes us the same? So I, the soul is not so much an answer as the name for the problem, right? I want to know what identity is. I want to know what consciousness is. I want to know what free will is. Um, another way to say is, I want to know what the soul is, but really, these all might be three different things. They might be interconnected. Uh, we'll talk about it. So let's talk about, yeah, talk of the soul isn't an answer. It's just a name for the problem. Um, let's talk about three different theories of personal identity. The soul's, sometimes people talk about the soul. They're like, it's a, it's a thing. It's a physical thing that stays the same, but it's also not physical. It's like an object that's in the ship, and it just goes, you know, you can replace all the parts, but the soul is still there. It's like, so it's a physical thing that stays the same, that doesn't have parts, but it's also not physical. Kind of think you're talking nonsense, right? If we think of it as just the name for the problem, right? I want to know what stays the same and makes me the same person. Now I, can, I, now I, get, now I get the idea. So here's a three different possible theories of personal identity. A, persons A and B are numerically identical if and only if. You guys are familiar with I, IFF is not, a, is not a typo. It means if and only if. Uh, basically, the, 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 the two things always co-occur. Persons A and B are numerically identical if and only if. They are physically continuous, right? So as long as I'm replacing my physical parts slowly, as long as I'm made of the same stuff, exactly the same stuff, or my cells have been replaced very slowly over time, right? If you were to disintegrate me and then build me out of new parts, I would not be physically continuous, right? Just same thing with the, the ship of Theseus being disassembled and then made of new parts. That's not the ship of Theseus, that's just a similar ship that you built 
right in the same spot. So as long as there's slow, gradual physical change. Now, I don't really find this theory very attractive because I don't think that we're physical objects like the, uh, like the ship is. Um, but we'll talk about that. Here's an, here's an alternative. Um, here's a psychological theory of personal, practical, personal identity. Persons A and B are numerically identical if and only if they are psychologically continuous, right? The first form of this really focused just on memory. It comes from John Locke, L-O-C-K-E, kind of famous for basically inventing our form, U.S.'s form of government. But um, his theory, but really I think it's best thought of as I'm, my collection of, like, my unique form of assholery, my love of video games, my love of philosophy, the fact that I'm an extrovert, the fact that I, I don't know, what's another, what's a bad habit, the fact that I procrastinate, like, the fact that I remember my birthday last year, the fact that I believe that the earth is spherical, the fact that I believe uh, I'm a Kantian ethicist, right? Like, like, there's a bunch of beliefs, memories, character traits, important events, crucial values, right? Some set of psychological features. Now, those change over time, but I'm gonna say that's Andrew Fife. And, in, and I'm still the same person as long as there's a slow continuity of me changing some of these personality traits, getting new memories, changing my beliefs. If there's a sudden dramatic change in my psychology, if I get hit over the head, lose my memory, lose my beliefs, change my personality, right? I'm gonna say Andrew Fife died, and now there's a body going around who's, who's a new person. Um, there's real life cases of this, I think. Like, I always, I always said that, uh, man, if I have Alzheimer's and I lose my mind and I'm like, I'm like, I can't, I can't, the things that I matter to me don't matter to me anymore. I can't remember my relationships. I can't remember the people I love. Just fucking kill me, right? Like, I, like, I know I might be sitting there happy playing Halo in the retirement, like, but just like, don't let me become that. I don't know if that's the same person. I don't know if I have a right to say that that person should be killed. It's a very, it's a, like, it's, so it's not clear to me that that's me anymore. Um, so I'm not sure if I get to sign away that person's life. Because psychologically, I think there's nothing, it's not enough psychological continuity between me and that person. <coughs> too drastic of a change, too outside, for I think the outside force of the disease causing the change as opposed to me choosing the changes I think is important. Um, there's, there's also a, what we'll get to is I'll call a hybrid theory, but let me get to that in a second. So here's one of my, um, Favorite examples that tries to push us from the physical theory to the psychological theory, right? I think the physical theory is true of the ship of Theseus. Or maybe like the function account, right? With the, like the pawn it has to function as a ship and they can have, well, it might be more complicated with the ship of Theseus. But it's still like the physical stuff is what I think really matters. I think that the psychological stuff is what matters more for us. So here's an example to try pushing us towards that. It's from, it's, uh, Locke, John Locke's The Prince and the Cobbler. A cobbler is a person who fixes shoes. I love going to cobblers whenever I can because I get to say the word cobbler. I can't believe they still exist. Uh, so suppose, this is, I'm gonna modify the example a little bit. Uh, there was no brain scientist in, in John Locke's original version, but he just had them switch brains. But I don't like that example because you're actually switching some physical material. I wanna try making it so there's no physical swap. So suppose that the citizens are coming to kill a certain prince. In order to escape being killed, the prince has had the cobbler's brain scanned and then re-scrambled. So then in the morning, the cobbler's body awakens with all the memories and character traits of the prince. While the prince's body awakens with all the cobbler's memories and character traits. The prince, prince hopes that now when the angry citizen mob comes, they'll kill the cobbler in his body while he continues to live in the cobbler's body. Is the prince right? Has his personal identity transferred to the cobblers, right? So on day one, right, we've got prince's body and psychology. And the cobbler's body and psychology. And day two, we've got the prince's body and cobbler's psych. And we've got the cobbler's body and the prince's 
psych. Okay, so on day one, this is definitely the prince. And this is definitely the cobbler. Great. On day two, where the fuck's the cobbler? Where the fuck's the prince? Are they there at all? Did they survive this procedure? Yeah. Um, I think for the, if you're like trying to like do the most moral thing, then the cobbler is like, because he has all the memories of doing the bad stuff as the prince, it's basically the prince at that point. Wait, the cobbler's body. Yeah, the cobbler's body has the memories and like he remembers doing the stuff that the prince did. <coughs> Not just the memories, the same personality traits. He's yeah. still, he's still like, oh, I love, yeah, I love killing those, 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 yeah. those commoners. So not only does he still want to, he, he remembers doing it, he still wants to, so I think. Still endorses it, still remembers it. He, Sometimes he still fantasizes about that time. He was like torturing one of them to death. And that's basically still the prince, but like physically, I don't, like physically that's still the cobbler's body, but that doesn't really matter because. If I'm the angry mob and I want justice, I'm trying to punish, just like the, I'm trying to punish the Nazi from the, the concentration camp. Can I go punish him? Or, 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 or can this person say, I'm not, I'm not the prince? Um, well, if they knew that the, the, that the mind was swapped, then yeah. The mind swapped, so the identity swapped with the person. You, you can't like choose to swap your mind with someone. That's like, that was done to them. That wasn't like they chose to. Well, in this case, the prince did, yeah. He paid his, he paid his royal. It wasn't the, the cobbler's choice that his mind was swapped. Yeah, the cobbler, I think, or maybe the, I don't know, maybe we tricked the cobbler into, but, but either way, like, yeah, the prince has definitely did it all. Well. So I think that's, like, you can't, really change, you can't, like, get someone else's memories, like, in any natural way. So it's, like, that's just, like, just, you get to implant them into your brain. So I think at that point, it would be justice to get the prince into the cobbler's body. What do you got? Um, I don't know, not to, like, make it more confusing, but, like, for an eternalist, like, do these questions really matter? Cause, like, yeah, good, 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 good. On that thing, like at some point. So the question is going to be so you're right. On the Eternalist, you're like, you have these time slices across the space time yeah, worm. At some point, it the question is, where do I carve up the worm? Because you might say something like, okay, at this point, there's a total psychology change because of, of Al Al Alzheimer's. So actually, this is me, and then this is this other person's worm. They, they share the same body. So, so even on the Eternalist, the question is like, how do I. I am the space-time worm, but the question is, where are the boundaries of that worm? Um, good. It's actually exact. Thank you for asking that question, because I totally forgot. I drew that over there specifically to make this point. Um, yeah. So let's remove some complexity and just consider the prince. The prince. Okay. So when he when he transfers, what is his basically his perspective, memory, and all that stuff over into the shoemaker's body? Yeah. Uh, Let's let's go ahead and reduce the complexity and say that the cobbler hasn't had his transfer hasn't had his consciousness transferred into the prince's body yet. The prince's brain is still essentially the same. Like there is nothing in there that says that pre the cobbler being transposed into his body, he changes. Therefore, I would like to make the argument that the prince is still the same person and then that this new Entity that has the prince's memories and is transposed into the cobbler's body, that is also a new person, effectively making it so that once the cobbler's consciousness overrides the original prince's bodies or brain, that effectively is killing off the original prince. And now you're left with two completely new and separate. Yeah, uh, good. Good. So let me, let, I'm going to go, I'm going to speed up just a little bit so we can get through everything. But so there's a couple possibilities here. So psych, if we took the physical continuity view, where's the prince? The prince is here on day two, right? It stays with the body. The body stays the same. There's only very little change, just like whatever cells he lost and then his body restored. So this, and the, the cobbler is still over here with the cobbler's body. Um, maybe, maybe we say something like, it still doesn't make sense to punish the cobbler's the, the prince now anymore because he's gone. Like maybe like legally, it doesn't make sense to, to punish somebody who's had such a weird, I don't know, su such a psychological change. But it is just literally the same person. That's one thing we could say. If we take the psychological theory, right? Identity goes with psychology, and it, it can change, but it has to change gradually. Uh, there's a body swap here, right? The there is a psychological continuity between 
the per the, this person and this person. And there's a psychological continuity between this body and this body. There's not physical continuity, like the psychology kind of jumps, right? But that doesn't matter. It's just that the, it, it doesn't jump. It's not a giant personality change. The personality stays the same, the memory stays the same. There's also a possibility, which is what I think you were proposing, which is uh, what we may call a hybrid theory, which just says that you need both physical continuity and psychological continuity. And on that view, uh, there's psychological continuity, but not physical continuity. So there's, there's no psychological continuity here, and there's no physical continuity here, so this person died. And these are new people. Same thing. There's no phys psychological continuity here. There's no physical continuity here. So this can't be identical with either of these. So this person also died. And now there's just new people occupying these bodies. So you could have either just a physical criterion, a psychological criterion, or both. I, I think most philosophers tend towards the middle one, the, just the psychological continuity. But you could have both. And then you would have four people in that story. Let me give another uh, case. Uh, Robert Nozick's teletransporter. So uh, if you're familiar with Star Trek, right, you often go into the teleporter. So imagine it works this way. You step into the teleporter, you're standing on the platform, it scans your body and every cell where it is, every, every electron, or not electron, every uh, neuron that's firing, it knows exactly what's firing, it knows how, what memories you have, et cetera. It takes a perfect scan, but in the process it has to destroy you. Right? So it's disintegrating you. And then somewhere else, let's say in Paris, uh, they reassemble you. Right? They send the information, they have a big vat of matter and a 3D printer. And they print a, and so then you, so you step in to the teleporter here in Maryland, you get shredded, scanned and disintegrated. And then in Paris, a person walks out with your memories, your character traits, your personality, the last thing they remember is stepping in to the teleporter here in Maryland. So my question is, if you use these machines, and if they became po possible, I'm sure we would all use them, and they become very normal, are we, are, are we killing ourselves and creating clones to continue our lives, or are we surviving that teleportation, right? What are people's thoughts? We have very little time. Oh, uh, well. I mean, technically, yeah, I think you are killing yourself, but because everything's exactly the same, it's not like you're creating a new person out of, uh, it's like you're, like you're creating a new person bit by bit, then if it all just like comes back together just as fast as it was deconstructed, and also in exactly the same way, and all the, also all the psychology is the same, then yeah, it is the same person. The physical theory and the hybrid theory would say you die and we're creating a clone. Uh, you might say something like, yeah, but maybe that's what we care about. Some philosophers want to say, yeah, you die, but actually death isn't that big of a deal. What we care about is that there's somebody carrying on our life. Another thing you might say is the psychological theory, where I think you do survive, right? There is a psychological continuity between you and the person who steps out of that teleporter. Therefore, you didn't die. Your identity just, because you're, you're not so tied to your physical matter, right, on that psychological view of identity. We are out of time. I'll, uh, we'll, I'll talk maybe a little bit more of this on Wednesday and, of course, in sections. Remember, if you're group A, you might write your paragraph tonight. So get it out of the way and submit it.